lot of relatives that are educators. My mom taught for a little bit. I have some aunts that were teachers. My grandmother was a teacher. Just seeing them coming home, talking about their stories, kind of made me want to do it. And the other morning, I was the kid that would go home with papers that teachers didn't want, give them to my little teddy bears on the bed and have my own little school session. Then you're gonna apply it with two problems. In high school, I had this teacher, Mr. Johnson. He taught math and he made learning fun. Like never before had I had a class that was that fun. He'd always put these quotes on the board and one of them was, you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your relatives. And it was little things like that that just brighten your day. And then we play games like Methopoly where you leave the room for a few minutes, go back. He said, bring something in. You don't know what you're supposed to bring in. He just said, bring a shape. So if you go get a cube and you're supposed to bring like a rectangular prism, you cost your group some points and you don't even realize it. But for us, it wasn't learning. It was just having fun. So you made me want to be a teacher like that? Yes. I'm happy that she's my teacher because I feel like she just works really hard and she helps a lot of students. What makes her such a great teacher is she makes sure you have all your work that is finished. Also, she makes sure your activities are fun for you and you would want to do. I loved having her because she would break down questions, but also she would see our skills that we have and she would also team us up with different students to see what we can help and what our difficulties is so then we can each other learn how to synergize with the habits. What's gonna happen with those two problems? My teacher philosophy, I want to say it's based on personalization, trying to give the kids exactly what they need. So differentiation, meeting their needs, and then making sure they understand that we're developing the whole child. So you're not just here for academics, but I also want to make you prepared for the world in any way that I can. She was fun. She would play games with us. She would play Gimke and Kahoo, and she would also make us be with friends. She knew that when learning, kids need to socialize so then we can get a great environment. When people they need help in the class, she'll make it fun so people get more encouraged or, or she'll do like a game with the problems and stuff and then people would want to do it so they could win the game. There are two ways that we could have done this. For me, some of my highest highest points was seeing one student, he's great in math, but for some reason we did a fraction concept and he didn't quite understand it. So I saw his confidence dip a little. And for me, it was, uh, okay, how can we rebuild his confidence? So I brought him to the table, worked with him a little one-on-one -on -one, and then kind of boosted him like, I know you can do it. So the next test he aced it and it was like, just the look of pride on his face was enough for me. And I had another student who was overwhelmed by home life. And you're thinking fourth, fifth grade, you shouldn't be going through a lot, but just, listening to her, letting her talk about what was going on, and then saying, hey, let's prioritize. What can we do that's within your control? I think taking the Leader in Me concepts and helping her to see how to use it. At the end of that day, she wrote me a heartfelt letter that I still have to this day. It just brought a tear to my eye and it brings me joy seeing them grow. Yeah, but if I was estimating and all I had was these, which one would I think is like? 